Right now, World of Warcraft is experiencing a huge content drought. As of recording this, patch 9.1 isn't even on the PTR yet. So we've gone through almost 5 months without any new content in the game, and this has caused a lot of players to stop playing the game. Including a lot of my friends, they just don't play anymore and it sucks, but I really can't blame them. For most players, once they get ahead of the curve, they stop playing. But that raises the question, why do they stop playing? There's more to the game than just pushing Gladiator, clearing Heroic or Mythic, and getting Keystone Master, right? Let's say you've just sat down for a nice fancy dinner. You're served an appetizer, maybe it's a nice order of breadsticks. Let's think of these breadsticks as the .5 patches, like 9.0.5. It's something, but I'm definitely still hungry. So now it's time for your actual dinner. You order a nice steak, that's the actual content of the game. That's your raids, that's your dungeons, and your PvP. You're served this main dish, every major patch, your 9.0, your 9.1, 9.2, and so on. So you've had your steak, but you also order a nice side, something else to eat after your main dish if you're still hungry. Maybe you get a nice side of vegetables. These are your optional objectives, like mount collecting, world quests, anima, and your covenant stuff. Now when you ordered your steak, you asked for the steak sauce to come on the side. But due to some mix-up, it ended up being on your steak. Think of this like Torghast and the Maw. It's something you wanted on the side, maybe just dip your steak into it, but instead it's all over your steak. You can't send it back, so you have two options. You can scrape off as much as you can, but you can't avoid eating at least some of it. Or you can say fuck it, and eat the steak with the sauce on it. With our main and side dishes complete, it's time for dessert. So long as you're still hungry for it. What is dessert then? Dessert is the mage tower. It's the secret puzzle mounts, and it's chromie time. You don't need dessert, but if you're still hungry, dessert is there, and it's great. And maybe you can't finish all of it, and that's okay, because you already finished your main dish. What does any of this have to do with the title of the video? Let's rewind a bit. Remember when I said your main dish was a steak? And that steak is the raids, dungeons, and PvP? Well, that steak is great, but eventually you finish the steak. So if you're still hungry, you move on to your sides. Which, as we've established, are your side objectives, like anima collecting. Well, what if that side sucks? What if instead of grilled vegetables or french fries, you get creamed corn? Okay, so you don't like your side dish. That's fine. What's on the dessert menu? Nothing. And that's Shadowlands' biggest problem. The main dish is great. I may not be the biggest fan of Castle Nathria, but the dungeons and PvP are loads of fun. But what happens when I've hit my goal as a player? Do I keep repeating the same content? Do I keep farming the same raid for months on end? I could keep doing that, but eventually, I will get bored. So you turn to your side dish, and your side dish sucks. Most of Shadowlands' daily activities aren't fun. No one enjoys world quests, and Anima is too slow to be rewarding. You may be saying world quests were fun in Legion. Not really. World quests were at their best in Legion because you could do them in 10 seconds. And once you unlocked flying, you could knock out your entire set of daily world quests in 5 minutes. And the rewards were reputations that could net you mounts, which weren't the best, but for 5 minutes per day, why not? Now let's look at Shadowlands world quests. They take a lot longer than 10 seconds, and in the vast majority of them, it boils down to kill 10 of these, fill in the bar that takes too long, collect these things, or sometimes they make you do a mixture of all of those things in the same quest. World quests were never fun, so making them longer was a huge mistake. On top of that, reputations are dull, and they have been for quite a while. Every single reputation has you doing world quests, and you get the same set of rewards for each rep. You get an assortment of crafting recipes, some of which admittedly are pretty cool. You get a tabard, an enchantment, and a mount. That's it. So it honestly gives players a little reason to care about these reps. But in Shadowlands, there are covenants. You can upgrade your sanctum to collect extra mounts and transmog, as well as extra side activities. Some of these are admittedly good. As a Night Fae, you get the theater mini bosses every day, which is easy and a little fun. You get your Mushroom Guy dailies, which are awesome. Seriously, I love this guy. You also get a Garden as Night Fae. As a vent there, you can upgrade your transport network to get extra dailies, as well as the Emperor Court, which. It's not great. As a Kyrian, you get a special arena where you can play as your soul binds, and as a Necrolord, you can build your own abomination. Most of these are pretty cool, but they aren't enough for players. 
Covenants are pretty samey and shallow. Then there are these callings, which replace emissaries, and these are better. They mix up the objectives. One day you might be doing three world quests. One day you may be filling up a bar by doing world quests, or if you want, you can just run a dungeon. It's very non-intrusive, but the problem is it's still not enough because you're really just doing the same things you were already doing with emissaries, but just in different quantities. Okay, so the side dish sucks. What about the dessert? Shadowlands has no dessert. There's nothing extra. So yeah, no wonder players are quitting. Shadowlands' biggest problem is that its side dish sucks. How do you make Shadowlands' side dish better? Well, first off, I do like parts of the calling system. I like that it drags you to different zones every day. It's great. Keeps you from farming in the same place over and over again. Two things need to change. The actual activity players are doing, and the rewards for doing them. So let's just take it zone by zone and come up with our own little daily activities for each one. Let's start with Bastion. So what do the Kyrian do? Their job is to collect fresh souls after they have died and transport them to the Shadowlands. Let's just take that and run with it. If you're doing a daily activity for the Kyrian, you will join them in collecting a soul from literally anywhere. And that's where I think Blizzard could go nuts with this. We get to visit so many random planets, so many random worlds, giving them so many options when it comes to which assets they use. So we have the concept. What's the actual gameplay? There is a quest in the Kyrian campaign where you go to collect a soul from Azeroth, and then you get to relive its last few moments of its life. Perfect. Let's do that. We could play as any race and do literally anything. Imagine we're playing as a soldier of the Alliance, we've just fought off an army of bandits, and you think, oh, he must have died fighting the bandits. But then you finish off all the bandits, return home, and you slip in the shower. It's a ridiculous idea, but you see where I'm going with this. Now obviously, you can't come up with infinite ideas, so at a certain point you're just replaying the same game every time. And that's fine. Make some of the rep rewards tied to this daily quest. One upgrade could let you move faster, or let you go even further back into the soul's life. So this is just one idea I had, but I did have one other idea for the Kyrian. Kyrian Flight School. Imagine you've just received your calling to go to Bastion, you meet up with them, and they strap wings on you and tell you to go fly. You grow wings and you're able to fly around the whole map, but eventually you could start racing on the Kyrian. Now again, this sounds like it would be fun for the first few times, so how would you make this more interesting? For starters, like the soul collecting side quest, you could purchase upgrades. Maybe you could unlock a boost for your wings. Another idea is as you increase in rep, you unlock certain rare encounters that you can only do with your wings. Maybe there's a rare in an island in the sky and he drops a rare pet and some anima. The point is that with both of these ideas, there's limitless potential. And in concept, they do sound more interesting than collecting anima cores or cleansing the Temple of Purity for the 10th time. So we've gotten the content out of the way, what about the rewards? I already mentioned upgrades for the actual dailies, but I also think that recipes should stay. In terms of Kyrian rewards, maybe you could get relics from souls you help cross into the afterlife. It could literally be anything. Maybe you helped a gnome cross over and you get a special gnome themed transmog. Or maybe you helped a soldier cross over and you get his shield. Again, I think that there's a lot of potential here. So those are my ideas for Batch. A fly trap? You're so cute! Who's my widow abomination? Oh. Oh, wow! Oh, this is so fun! I love being a necrolord! It's the one area in Maldraxxus that stands out the most. The Theater of Pain. It's the first place you go to when you get there, and it's in the middle of the map. In-game, the Theater of Pain is really only used to hold mini-bosses, which is actually pretty cool. You get to fight a lot of different creatures, and it's creative. But I want to take that and build off of it. What if we could have our own gladiator fight in our name in the arena? What if whenever you go to Maldraxxus, you could pick from one of three arena newbies and take them around Maldraxxus, doing dailies that are tailored to them? For example, if one of the fighters is a skeleton who was also a coward, maybe one of his daily quests could be going into a cave of spiders and trying to help him navigate through. Now what's the point in taking your fighters through dailies? Well, remember in Ashtar, you could pick from three followers every day and take them on dailies to level them up. It's like that, but deeper. As they level up, you can teach them new skills that you can buy off the rep vendor. The main idea is that over time, your champion fights in arena matches for you, continues to get stronger to fight more powerful foes, and at the same time, you gain reputation. Eventually, they would hit level cap, and 
you would pick another fighter with their own unique quests and continue the cycle. And maybe when you cap a fighter, you get a daily to fight them in your own match and they have a chance to drop them out or something. And if you cap all three fighters, you get an achievement and a title. So that's one idea, but another idea I had, which also involves the Theater of Pain, is finding new competitors. There's a side quest in Maldraxxus where you team up with brokers to hunt a giant blue guy and you capture him so he can become a fighter in the arena. So let's make a daily out of it. Every time you get a calling to Maldraxxus, you would help the brokers. And similarly to my Bastion idea, you would travel to an infinite number of worlds to go find literally anyone to be a fighter in the Theater of Pain. But let's take that a step further. You get to set up your own custom matches, and these bosses are super difficult. But when you beat them, you get access to special rewards from the rep vendor. Not as in-depth as the former, but I still think it's cool. So once again, we have the content out of the way, what about the rewards? In terms of unique rewards, I know I mentioned now every rep has a mount tied to it, but I do think it'd be really cool if Maldrax has got a Theater of Pain inspired rep mount. It could be something like the Warrior class mount, but a skeleton. Basically get a skeleton dragon and put a bunch of weapons on it, and boom! Sup y'all, it's me. It's your boy the Easter Bunny. Arkenweald is a giant forest and home to the wild hunt faction, so naturally my mind goes hunting. Imagine you pick up your daily, quest text mentions piles of dead animals and a trail of blood as well as screams. You investigate the scene and do whatever you can to pick up the trail of whatever beast did this. Eventually through enough tracking, you find the beast out in the wild. This beast is set in one location for the entire server, so naturally everyone is in trade chat trying to find it. So you kill the beast, and that's it. Almost. You also get another set of dailies to help clean up the mess it left, but the further you get into your reputation, the more interesting it gets. Naturally, you're able to buy upgrades to make hunting beasts easier, but you can also buy contracts. These contracts are rare hunts that only you can see or do. You hunt this monster down, but instead of finding it in the overworld, you find it near a cave. In order to enter, you have to queue into an instance. The location of this cave is also marked on your map. When you enter the instance, you find this monster, and the fight is really tough. It's a lot like the Mage Tower. It's something that takes multiple attempts and requires you to use a lot of thought and skill. Eventually, you down the monster and you turn in the quest, and you are able to purchase a helmet transmog that resembles the monster's head. And there are several of these contracts you can purchase and do, and once you kill all of them, you can get a special backpack slot. This backpack would be adorned with different parts of every single monster that you've killed. I think this is a very interesting way to kind of bring back some of the Mage Tower ideas into Shadowlands. I really miss having solo bosses to tackle, so I think this is a really cool idea for a daily. What about the rewards? I already mentioned the monster parts, but what if one of the rep options was special weapons transmog? Imagine a weapon for every slot, like a special skinning knife for the dagger slot or a really sick-ass bow made from monster parts. I like this idea because it helps separate Arden Wield from its more... light-hearted stigma? My idea for Revendreth is pretty easy to guess. The one thing Venthyrs are known for is being harvesters of pride. They take all their arrogant souls and make them realize their sins so they can eventually move on to another realm, or even stay and become Venthyr. My idea for this is very similar to the Meldrax's idea, in that you can choose from one of three souls to go do dailies with. Once again, these dailies are tailored to the specific souls, but the further you get into your reputation, the further your souls level up, the more story you get with them. Eventually, once they hit certain levels, you get to partake on a side quest before you become that soul and relive a pivotal moment in their life. Also, every big side quest moment, they get more attached to you. Their dailies change and become easier. They even change their appearance. Once they hit level cap, you have to confront their biggest sin, which is the worst thing they did in their life, which is basically another big boss fight, much like the ones I mentioned in Ardenweald. Except this time, you're still playing as the soul. This would allow for a more tailored experience. One problem with my idea for Arden Wield is that it's very hard to design a solo boss fight for every single spec in the game, but this way you have a set kit, so the boss fight should be the same difficulty for every player. Once you defeat their ultimate sin, you get their sin stone, which I guess could be a toy. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you free all the souls and you can get an achievement for that, but you can also get a mount as well. Once you unlock the achievement and reach max rep, Imagine being able to ride on a goliath made up of sinstones. So that all sounds well and good, but what about more random dailies? Every day there could be another Venthyr who needs help with a certain soul. 
you can travel to the soul and experience the soul sin. And once again, this could be anything from anywhere. Imagine you step into the soul's life and you become a rogue in Molten Core. You fight Gar and Abiding Drops and you ninja loot it. It's just one idea, but the potential here is pretty obvious. So what about rewards? I already mentioned the Simstone Mount, but in terms of what else, maybe you can get different transmog pieces based off of three main souls. For example, let's say one of them is a goblin. Maybe you can get a pet that's a pile of gold. So that's all four zones down. The question is, would this solve Blizzard's daily issue? Maybe. The reality is, players will literally go through content as fast as they can. Eventually they will cap out all their reps, but I definitely think that making the process more fun will help with overall player engagement. I think the main takeaway from this video, if anything, is that the Shadowlands has so much potential. I don't think they need to kill world quests, but there needs to be something else there, like everything I talked about in this video. I get it, we're in a pandemic right now. I can't imagine developing an MMO is easy. That being said, I doubt the pandemic is the reason why Shadowlands dailies are the way they are. At the end of the day, the main dish for WoW will always be good. There will always be something there to keep players occupied every major patch. The problem lies when players finish their main dish. There has to be a better, more engaging side dish than world quests. I definitely hope these ideas can help spark some creativity, because at the end of the day, WoW's biggest problem is its lack of quality side dishes. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my video. Uh, I appreciate any criticisms in the comments below, any thoughts. Do you have any better daily ideas? I would love to know. I've definitely had these thoughts in my mind for a while. You know, all this video, all the complaining aside, I definitely still am enjoying my time in the Shadowlands. I just think there's a lot of missed potential here. Um, and be sure to like the video. Also, follow my Twitch channel in the description. Uh, I do play a lot of WoW. Right now, though, I am playing a lot of Skyrim. That's pretty fun. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching.